Hi, so for part four, I wanted to talk about the ongoing modern opiate epidemic going on in America um, and other parts of the world. Um, so the modern day discussion on the addictive nature and death rates of opioids um, typically get all bunched together, um, but in actual, and it's termed the opioid epidemic, but in actuality, it should really be called the fentanyl epidemic. Um, so fentanyl is one of the most, if not the most powerful synthetic drug ever created. Um, and in fact is for all opioid related deaths, um, known to date, it's about two thirds of all deaths related to opioids. It comes from the drug fentanyl. And so the opioid crisis is funded and maintained by massive corporate by massive pharmaceutical corporations, medical distribution companies, um, drug cartels from Mexico, the Chinese government, the American government, and so on. <laughs> Whoever profits from the crisis has pretty much continuously covered up and maintained it. Um, Um, but there has also been um, major causes of the opioid crisis. It's from illegal uses off the street, but majority of them actually comes from prescribed fentanyl. And so fentanyl was supposed to be prescribed for stage four cancer patients. And those who are experiencing pain and that sort of level of pain, um, However, um, fentanyl has been overly prescribed in America and the incentivization of doctors to prescribe fentanyl has been what has um, really caused the crisis to occur. And due to opioids already having an addictive um, quality about them, fentanyl is 100 times more potent than that of a, your regular endorphins. So you can already see how powerful this drug can be. But the wild thing is the mass production and majority of fentanyl comes from China. So, which is interesting because in 2019, um, China did pass a law to have strict regulations on fentanyl um, due to pressures from other countries, including America. Um, however, they don't implement these laws. Um, so there's been several mediums of access, including their dark web. Um, but China may have restricted its fentanyl trade due to global interventions in 2019, but China just changed its distribution strategy to online within the same year. Um, so even though many have laws been set in place and tried to discourage fentanyl distribution, um, but there has been proof that many drug dealers have been shipping the materials and chemicals needed to make fentanyl as a way of getting around the ban. So instead of just shipping, which is funny because it actually came through the USPS mail system, rather than shipping just straight fentanyl, what they would do is give you all of the components needed and you could send that through the mail as a way of getting around a lot. Now that was not regulated. Um, so, and there's other ways you can get around it, of course. Um, but to understand how um, American federal agencies and pharmaceuticals use fentanyl contribution to mass addiction and kill hundreds of thousands of American citizens um, is by the origin of fentanyl. So fentanyl came around um, by Dr. Paul Jansen in the 1960s. But Jansen's patent, which basically meant that no one could really manufacture fentanyl and sell it on a mass platform really anywhere. Um, however, due to the patent system, that expired in 81. Um, so when the patent expired, this 
gave access to major pharmaceutical companies being able to you dis manufacture distribute fentanyl in any ways they saw fit in a lot of the ways they did it was uh, fentanyl lollipops um they would have had patches um I mean, fentanyl really can't, is one of those drugs that you can actually use almost any way. Intravenously, you can use it through a needle, um, intramuscularly, transdermally, which would be the skin patches, enter transnasally, which would have been a nasal spray. Um, I mean, really any way you could think of it. The lollipops were kind of an interesting one. Um, I feel like there's a lot of problematics with that one, especially because when you think of like suckers, you think of um, children, and I think that there's that could be talked about another, maybe another five minutes talking about that. Um, so basically, um, with fentanyl's um, potency and it being able to uh, mimic the same effect effects on a higher level as your endorphins so as the um so of course it would have many benefits to medical settings um especially for cancer patients like i said previously especially for an anesthetics for surgery and so on um however when they were doing several studies they found that you know it was not being prescribed. Fentanyl was being prescribed pretty loosely. Um, in fact, some research actually indicated that 50% of those described fentanyl were actually issued wrongfully. Um, so, with like the increased rates of prescription for fentanyl, the FDA, so the government... Food Drug Administration decided to create TIRF REMS, T I R R E M S. Now, this was supposed to be the checks and balances of holding big pharma accountable, or so you think. Um, so, the FDA obviously they created this, they were aware of the level of addiction and the mortality caused by fentanyl. Um, in 2011. So that's actually when they created Turf Rams. So from 81 to uh, 2011, there was no real regulation, um, supposedly. <laughs> um, so Turf Rams actually stands for Transmuscular Intermediate Release Fentanyl Products Risk Evaluation and Migration Strategies. Um, and its motto, for which I'm reading, it was created to ensure that fentanyl was being prescribed for the original purpose, to help eliminate the pain with late stage cancer patients. However, the FDA being corrupted um, by big pharma um, decided to not monitor turf rims, and that was subcontracted to pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> So amazed. Um, so, in fact, the one that the district, so the pharmaceutical company decided to let this outside company known as McKesson to run turf rams. But McKesson is a drug distribution company. So, even though Big Pharma makes the drugs, um, they majority of the time have drug distribution companies that actually go and distribute all their pharmaceuticals. Um, so McKesson being one of the biggest names was then brought on by that same pharmaceutical companies to manage turf rims, um, which is amazing that this was even allowed, especially considering that this is not that old in 2011. Um, so, Obviously, there were several conflicts of interest. McKesson stands to gain profit by continuously selling a ton of fentanyl. Um, so, of course, why would it really regulate? So, they overprescribed fentanyl to non cancer patients because it made huge profit margins. Um, 
the FDA did create these relatively legal bogus guidelines that did require medical professionals, mainly doctors, to take the certified exam that would allow them to prescribe drugs such as fentanyl. So just because you have an MD or a DO or a PA or whatever behind your name doesn't mean you can describe any type of drug to whoever. Um, <laughs> but because... FDA was not overseeing that, and it was McKesson and other distribution companies, mainly McKesson, um, that was the one actually doing this. The exam was not, it was hardly anything. It, <laughs> it was, was rather oversimplified, easy manipulated. Majority of the time, there have been cases where a lot of people claim that it was open booked. Um, but I mean, at this point, there isn't really, at the peak of it, there's really no um, incentive for the government to come in and stop any of this, you know? So, so it just keeps on going. And so, I mean, there's several pharmaceutical companies that did take advantage of this, um, such as um, Cephalon, C-E-P-H-A-L-O-N, had reported that only 1% of oncologists wrote legal prescriptions for fentanyl used in the form of lollipops. <laughs> but eventually, um, Cephalon did plead guilty in 2008 um, to overly pushing the use of fentanyl onto non-cancerous patients. And they resulted in a fine of $200 million. Um, the pharmaceutical company known as Isis would eventually use incentive taxes to encourage doctors to prescribe fentanyl, known as racketeering, bribings, and kickbacks. Um, NCs in 2019 would actually settle in court due to the racketeering bribing to encourage fentanyl, and this resulted in $225 million payout. Um, NCs would actually eventually claim bankruptcy, and they were actually, um, and they were, would claim bankruptcy, and they are allowed to, they were no longer allowed to sell fentanyl, which they were able to get out of paying majority of that fine. Um, so that's interesting. But you know, what's even more interesting is the introduction of naloxone. But INSYS, the same company that was encouraging doctors to overprescribe fentanyl, would then get approval in 2019 of selling naloxone, the same year they got accused of murdering Americans, also got improved for making the miracle drug that helps stop overdoses, <laughs> opioid overdoses, in fact. That is just amazing. Um, Cephalon actually, came up with the same idea. They rebranded themselves as TEVA Pharmaceutical Company, and they also received approval on their naloxone nasal spray in 2019. Um, so I, I'm just amazed. They used um, bankruptcy rebranding to now profit off of the, so they created, they, they encouraged doctors to overprescribe this highly addictive drug. They get people addicted. People are dying. They know that people are addicted to fentanyl. Now they create the miracle drug to save them. So they cause the problem. Now they're trying to profit off of the cause that they started. It's quite their own little economic system. Uh, but yeah, so um, so naloxone works on the same opioid receptors as fentanyl, and it would bind to receptor site faster than fentanyl. It's really a um, miraculous drug, honestly. Um, so it can actually reverse overdoses on opioids um, at an alarming rate, and this can actually save human lives. 
Um, so, but it's not a, it's not a way to stop addiction. It's only a way to, um, stop an overdose. So, I mean, there's a methadone therapy, counseling, opioid replacement therapy are going to have long lasting treatment addiction to opioids. Um, methadone therapy, which is also known as methadone maintenance. Um, it's quite effective for people coming off of fentanyl. Um, it has its advantages such as the outcome of the patient, the quality of life is likely to increase. Methadone maintenance has shown that the client is less likely to have a criminal behavior by nearly 50% as compared to other opioid drugs. Another benefit is that methadone does not correlate to lack of unemployment as opposed to highly addictive opioids. Um, a major advantage for methadone maintenance is the access to therapy, cognition-based therapeutic programs for the client, Methadone maintenance is beneficial to the opioid addict due to the ability of therapy, helping with coping and understanding why they abuse the drug. Um, though methadone does have some drawbacks to it, unfortunately, it's not every therapy is foolproof. Um, methadone can affect neurons within the brain. As a few studies with rats have shown memory issues with the frontal lobe, methadone can be lethal if combined with alcohol or other sedatives. Uh, methadone can still be abused. Uh, methadone can be lethal um, if you do combine it with alcohol and other sedatives. Um, meth you can still get several effects such as vomiting, insomnia, respiratory issues. Um, it's by far safer drug to weed off of as opposed to fentanyl and other strong opioids. Um, but yeah, let's see. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, fentanyl, um, like I said earlier, fentanyl is a synthetic opioid agonist, which acts primarily on the opioid receptor. Um, we talked about how it goes through. But yeah, um, I would probably have recommended um, methadone as a um, one of the safer options for weeding off of opioid because it is such a, it is such a strong drug. And it is kind of sad to know that the reason that people are addicted to, um, or why a good portion of people are still continuously addicted to opioids is the, uh, its own government. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's kind of sad, um. There, there hasn't been really any reparations paid from these massive corporations that have taken so many lives. Um, but many pharmaceutical companies that are found guilty and charged with opioids end up not paying the full amount of their discretionary actions because they claim bankruptcy. Um, and then they end up just creating another company. Uh, so, I mean, fentanyl is not the only opioid that has caused so much grief and addiction and controversy in America. But I will say, due to its strength, the amount of people it's killed, um, that it is a game changer um, due to its synthetic chemistry and the result it's actually manifested in America and continues to this day. Um, it also goes to show um, that addiction is not just one person that anyone can get addicted. Um, I think fentanyl really does kind of um, this whole epidemic. And now people are understanding um, how big pharma does come and play a role into it, how addiction with fentanyl or other drugs, other opioids um, really is not just one person. It's not a particular type of person um, and that it can be this massive corporation economic enterprise um, that is creating this problem and that maybe 
that it's not a choice to be addicted that it really is um this whole um this whole uh, company this whole um plot that they economically benefit from um so i really think that it's quite it's quite awful honestly that so many people are ruining people's lives by this communities are being affected by this that they're not being held responsible due to corruption and politics due to um um companies that are able to pay um are to pay off government and how corrupt it is that hundreds of thousands of lives have to be lost because of profit yeah but yeah